Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. It's been a while since, or a few days, not that long, just a few days since I posted a video because as most of you know, I had a fever this week, um, a fever that's been kind of coming and going. I'm really grateful I had some pre-recorded videos that I could put up for you guys, but I'm glad to be back. I still have a little bit of a low-grade fever. I just took my temperature. I'm still congested. Um, coughing, but I think we're good to go. This morning, I had the pleasure of hopping on with JCK uh, as a surprise guest for her live Q&A. And I got to talk to a guy named Campbell who has a Tartaria channel. So I am going to be placing some of those links down in the description box below for you guys. And hopefully I can get them on and we can do a deeper, deeper discussion into Tartaria with them. Because as I've said before, there are channels out there that are 100% dedicated just to the subject of Tartaria. I feel like my strength, my wheelhouse is more researching into odd stories, especially spiritual and religious stories. Although I will talk about Tartaria, but he's definitely more of the expert. And so I'm super excited about moving forward and digging more into this fascinating topic. So once again, I wanted to give some shout outs to our awesome sub subscribers here on Esoteric Atlanta. I know I spoke about this on our last live, but Sandy made me this gorgeous necklace. Um, she has an Etsy shop that I am going to be placing a link to her Etsy shop down in the description box below. It is gorgeous. And she wrote about every, wrote me a note with all the different stones that she used for this necklace. Um, so please go and check out Sandy's Etsy shop coming up. If you've got someone with a summer birthday or you just want to do something nice for a friend or a girlfriend or whatever, um, go check her shop out. I really believe that this is what our new earth is going to look like is us really just helping each other out with our small businesses. I mean, I would rather get a homemade gift from a small business where there was actual love and thought put into the manufacturing of the gift versus getting something that's just duplicated in a mass production line. So once again, please, please, please go and check out Sandy's shop on Etsy. Again, link is down in the description box below. I also got this awesome, awesome, awesome uh, bracelet with the protective eye from another subscriber. Now, Stephanie sent this to me. Um, I think she sent it to Stephanie first and then she sent it over to me. And I believe this was made by Rebecca. Now, Rebecca, if you're watching, will you let me know if you have a shop too so I can put your shop in the description box below because this is absolutely gorgeous. And I have worn this. Uh, last week, I was wearing this on a couple of shows. I don't know if you noticed before I got sick. Um, and so I haven't been able to give you the proper thank you, but thank you so much. And I love how you picked gold uh, for me because gold kind of is my color. So I love it so much. Thank you so, so, so much. And I also got some awesome uh, rock healing stones from Terry that again, Stephanie sent over to me. So some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rocks. I have a bowl here that I keep all of my, uh, <laughs> all of my rocks in. It's like my little bowl of rocks and I'll, I'll frequently pull one out and like hold it depending on what, what I feel like I need when I'm doing like a long episode or something, or I'm talking to someone else, I frequently, so I'm going to put these in with all my other, my other rocks. One day I'm going to have to put a picture of my desk actually up for you guys. Cause it's quite comical. My, my friends always laugh that I have like a witch's deck. Cause I got like pyramids and, um, yonk. I've got my big amethyst here. I've got my big tourmaline here. And I've got this like shell that like, where I keep my sage and my, um, uh, dragon's blood for protection, like the good, the light worker, good witch is a light worker. So, um, but no, it's just rocks and, and stuff to keep me protected on this journey. As I hope you guys are all staying protected on this journey. So channel updates, moving forward with June, we're just doing the same stuff that we've been normally do. We're going to continue with the Sophia code. Obviously, thank you guys for having such a positive response to that book. And then obviously the Magdalene manuscript is going to continue as well. Now coming up this Wednesday on the channel for the Sophia code, we are getting into ISIS. And that video is 
two hours long. Um, I played with cutting it into two sections, but it just did not work as two sections because it's a constant reading. So um, with Isis, so I don't think half the war the next is going to be as long. I kind of already looked ahead to try to figure out how long that was going to be. So I would suggest that for this Isis reading, though, that you listen to it or read along with me at a time where you can cut out two hours specifically for the reading because it is really intense and really, really valuable. It's a lot of activation with Isis. So I would really, really suggest that you cut, cut that two hours out to be present with the material. Now, also on Wednesdays, as most of you know, I am over on Aquarius Rising Africa where uh, Shanti and I are doing commentary on the documentary, The Lost History of the Flat Earth, which is about Tartaria. It's one of the best documentaries on Tartaria out there. It's like seven hours long. That's why we're breaking it up into weeks to talk about it. And just bringing up the highlights that make people kind of scratch their head as to like, oh, wow, yeah, the history they taught us doesn't even make sense, depending on what the evidence that we have. On Mondays, I am still back with Aquarius Rising Africa as well to talk about these interesting topics. Last week, uh, Stephanie joined me. We went through the Merovingians, which we spoke about on my channel as well. If you missed that episode, I will put that in the description box below. And this upcoming Monday, we are going to be reviewing Mithraism again. We've spoken about Mithraism multiple, multiple, multiple times on this channel, but I was pushed by Magdalene to bring it up again on Aquarius Rising Africa, because in my opinion, Mithraism, along with Tartaria, is kind of the nail in the coffin for some of these matrix-based uh, dogmatic control mechanisms like the church. Now I am going to do a brief uh, rundown quickly of Mithraism. So for those of you who want to join us on Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa at 10 o'clock Eastern time, if you want to join in the live chat, I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick rundown so that you have places to start for your own research. With that being said, there won't be a Mystery Monday released this Monday uh, because I've been sick and I haven't had a chance to um, prepare a Mystery Monday. But again, we will be back on with Aquarius Rising Africa to talk about this topic. Now, I discovered Mithraism when I was doing my breakdown on the Council of Nicaea, which was the original starting point to see where everything went wrong when it came to the Christian faith. As you guys know, a couple of years ago, we started going through the Missy Books of the Bible on David Zublik's channel. That's when I first started to get threatened by the Christians because I was just simply reading through these missing books that we have available. No harm, no foul. Just because you're reading something doesn't mean you have to believe it. We're, I just wanted to see what they said. And now I understand what Magdalene, who is my guide guiding me through this, wanted me to do. By reading through the missing books of the Bible, it opened up a whole uh, Pandora's box, shall we say, a rabbit hole of deception that went beyond just these censored books of the Bible. And yes, the missing books are a form of censorship. So if you don't support censorship, then you should be totally fine with people reading the missing books of the Bible. If you are not okay with people reading the missing books of the Bible, then you are not, then you are in support of censorship, basically. That's censorship. That's what that is. So obviously getting into the Council of Nicaea, though, where the first the first time we went through this cutting of, of books. Now, remember, guys, according to what we know, there should be 777 books in the Bible. We got 66. So most of the story is missing. And now most of these books we cannot get our hands on. There's about 45 books out there that have been found in excavation sites that we are able to look through. But beyond that, the rest of them are hidden under the Vatican. Now, obviously, things like the, things like the Gnostic text tell a totally different story. Things like the Apocryphon text tell a totally different story. And for what I understand, there's some missing books of the Bible we have yet to go through that actually confirm that Yahshua was never crucified. Something that I now accept to be the truth. The reason why I accept that Yahshua the person that we call Jesus, which we're going to get to, his name was actually Yahshua, was never crucified is because the God of light, of source, does not require blood sacrifices. Lucifer does. But we do know that the God of the Bible is Lucifer. If you want that confirmation for yourself, you can read Revelation 21, where they talk about the new God coming down to earth. Who isn't the new God? It's the original God, because Lucifer's contract is now over. So when I started studying the Council of Nicaea, I realized that Constantine himself was no Christian. 
don't even know don't even get me started like you guys can do your own research on that it's pretty obvious i know the church wants to tell you he's a saint i don't anybody who's been saint sainted at this point i'm a little skeptical of mother Teresa was effing sainted we know how that worked out and we do know through writings especially from his biographer eusebius that constantine himself was constantly changing his story for political power Constantine himself was somebody who wanted a new world order. He did not want people to be free. And in fact, the emperor that he went to war against, Max Ascentius, was more of the emperor that wanted people just to be free. He didn't want his people heavily taxed. He wanted them to be able, he was against persecution of different faiths. He wanted people just to be able to live and let live. Something kind of like what the American Constitution is supposed to grant us people here in America. It was Constantine that was the communist tyrant psychopath who actually had his son beheaded and boiled his wife alive after he allegedly found Christ. Shit's not adding up. Now, we also have proof by Constantine himself that he was no Christian. And this is from the Ark of Constantine that today is in Rome, Italy. I don't know if that's where it originally was, but the Ark of Constantine does not say anything about Jesus, Yahshua, the Christ. It says nothing about the Christian faith. In fact, it's full of more paganistic beliefs. So if you don't believe me, if you're still brainwashed and mind controlled by the church, go and look at the Ark of Constantine. So if Constantine was not a Christian, then what was he? And that's when I found Mithraism. And when I found Mithraism, I realized that there was no way in hell my ass was ever stepping foot in a church again, unless it was for a funeral or a wedding and it was somebody else and I was obligated to go. But I, I, that's when I got it. That's when it all clicked. That Christianity is no more than another version of Satanism. Legit. So let's talk about it. Who was Mithra? Well, Mithra was the divine son who promised immortality. Sounds interesting, right? Divine son who promised immortality. He was the god of showing light or the illuminated, a.k.a. Lucifer. Because he was the god of showing light or the illuminated, he was depicted as the sun god. He had the rays coming out of his head. The rays that would eventually turn into the halo of Jesus. The rays that are also on the Statue of Liberty in New York. Makes you wonder, is that Mithra? Mithra was born on December 25th. In some accounts, he was born of a virgin, just like Mary. Allegedly, we know that Jesus or Yahshua was not born of a virgin because that's a satanic sex ritual with a succubus or incubus. They still do that shit today. No, no, no. Consent is needed for the light. So Yahshua's parents were Mary and Joseph. But Mithra, allegedly, in some accounts, was born of a virgin. In some accounts, he was carved out of stone a lot of the ancient writings on Mithra are no longer available to the public. So we have to go with the archaeological evidence that people have found. He had 12 disciples. Just like they tell you Yahshua had 12 disciples, but the real Yahshua had way more than 12 disciples. He promised you immortality if you followed him. He had communion with the bull, which we're going to get into. Get this, guys. He called himself the way, the truth, and the life. Just like John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Funny that, 1,400 years before they tell us Jesus lived, Mithra was saying this, that he was the way, the truth, and the life. He practiced blood sacrifice. He was killed for the betterment of the world, which is what they tell you about Jesus. He was buried in a tomb, and then he rose again after three days. 
Interesting, right? Interesting. He is considered the mediator between God and man. He is also honored as the patron of loyalty to the emperor or the king of kings. Now, Mithraism itself was a religion of the upper class and of the military industrial complex, specifically the Roman army. Now, I don't believe the Roman empire actually existed. So I think what we're seeing here is the remains of something else. But regardless, the elites practice Mithraism. So let's look at their beliefs and what they did. They included seven grades of initiation. And the initiates called themselves syndexioes, which I don't know if I'm saying that right, syndexioes, I'll put the word up on the screen, which means united by a handshake. Sounds awfully familiar to me, to the Freemasons. They met in underground temples. And they had to take an oath of secrecy. Now, when they invented Christianity, which, yes, they did invent Christianity, they invented it as a form of Mithraism, except the counterfeit Mithraism, which would be the Jesus story, was sold to the masses. And then the real Mithraism, and the real Mithraism was used as a worship for the elite. Now, how do we know this? Because a lot of our old churches have Mithraic temples in the basement. So while the masses were upstairs, none the, none the wiser, being spellcasted by the priests and the preachers, the elites were underneath them committing sacrifices and worshiping Mithra, harnessing the energy from the people above. Pisses you off, doesn't it? We also see Mithra temples near Hadrian's Wall. And all over other parts of Europe and probably here in the Americas as well. And in fact, in one Mithra temple in Rome, Italy, on the wall, there is something carved that says, and thou hast saved us by the shedding of the eternal blood. Sounds very similar to what is said in the Bible, except for this eternal blood was Mithra sacrificing a bull. Now, a bull is Baal. Duh. So he's sacrificing Baal, the son of Lucifer the offshoot of Lucifer for a blood ritual for the immortality of the earth. And then the communion is them drinking the blood. What does that sound like? And eating the meat in order to achieve immortality. And then again, once Mithra died, he rose again in three days. Now I'm going to leave it there for you. So you can join us on Monday for a deeper discussion. Stephanie will also be there to add into her research as well. But one thing I did notice, so a couple of years ago when I started talking about Mithraism, there wasn't many videos on Mithraism. But once we started talking about it and really pointing out the obvious that Christianity is basically Mithraism, not the other way around, all of a sudden these other videos started popping up to try to disprove it. At the end of the day, you're free to believe what you want to believe. But facts are facts. Only Lucifer requires a blood sacrifice. Only Lucifer is a genocidal maniac who is only satiated by blood. If you're a parent, ask yourself, would you condemn your children to hell for any reason? Even if they were awful? No, you wouldn't. So why would God do that? The real God, the true creator, is a loving, loving source of consciousness and bliss. The real story of Christ was the story of Yahshua and Magdalene. They came down here as teachers to activate our own Christ consciousness within us, to show us that we were like them. There was no difference between you, me, and Yahshua. We all came from the same creator. They weren't crucified. They weren't sacrificed. They died the way that most people die. They left the earth when it was their time. But the story of Jesus, that's the story of Mithra. The halo is the sun rays. Sun rays demonstrating the illuminated light of Lucifer. So again, it's okay to believe what you want to believe, but you have to understand where everything is coming from. And I know that it can be scary. The matrix of religion is a hard one to break. You're looking at people's vulnerability. You're looking at massive cogn cognitive dissidents. You're looking at major mind control. Why not? Because it's your mortality you're dealing with. 
And we've all been grandfathered into these faiths. And it's not just the Christian faith that's fucked up. They're all fucked up because they're all part of the system. They're all part of the cabal. Make no mistake about that. The true God is one of divine grace and mercy and love. The true God would never ask for a blood ritual. Only Lucifer would. So I hope and pray that people start to wake up and realize this. All right, guys. Hope you can join us on Monday at Aquarius Rising Africa to do a deeper discussion. Thank you for sitting through this. I still have a bit of a fever, so I'm just trying to get through it. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be speaking with Emmy again and Stephanie to do an astrological look at June. So that should be interesting. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday and I will see you soon. Bye.